Hey everybody, Ro here, and this is a video on how to film guitar covers. It's not going to be how to record one, I actually have a guide for that I'm going to put in the description. This is going to be how to take your smartphone or an inexpensive camera and put it in such a right way and follow a few simple steps to make a really cool looking video. We're going to break it down into just about six steps, and if you follow all six of these steps, I guarantee you will get, hopefully, as close to the quality of videos that I try to put into my own. Learn your song. This step sounds really dumb, but it's actually the most important one. The most important thing that I'm trying to iterate here is you should know the song you are about to make a video for very, very well. Know every part. Know when you bend, when you vibrato, when you don't vibrato, because there's two types of music videos, and for both of these, you're going to really need to know how your song goes in and out. The first kind is a live music video. This means that if I were to grab a guitar right now, plug it in, and start playing my music, exactly what I play is the final cut of what you're going to see when I put this out on YouTube. The second kind is what I guess we could call a fake or acted music video. This is where the musician is maybe on a stage or in one of those dumb black background things that I use or uh, anywhere. This person is not playing the live footage. They're replaying and pretending to play what you're listening to. This one requires you to be very, very good with your song, and a mistake I've made for a while is not knowing my song perfectly. Now when picking a camera, you're probably going to want to think of a few different things here. Now in 2016, I find most videos are being shot in 1080p or 1920 by 1080 as a resolution with 24 frames per second. The reason for the frame rate is because that's the most cinematic look. It's a bit choppy, but it's also uh, really engaging and fast. I personally don't like the look of 60 frames per second either. It's a little too smooth, so I stick to that. Now a DSLR, or a traditional photo camera, is a perfectly good uh, device you can use to film your covers. Now a smartphone will work too, just as long as you're able to set up a few controls that I'm going to mention later. And a lot of camcorders work as well. Now for example, I personally use the Canon Rebel series, but there's great cameras from Sony, Nikon, and others. You can also use a smartphone like a Samsung Galaxy S7, a Google Pixel, or any iPhone, just as long as you're happy with the picture. Now there's a few settings that you want to look at, like the ISO value, or the light sensitivity. I set the value to 100 or 200, maybe 400. The lower the value, the clearer the picture, but you're also going to have a more darker shot, so be sure to have a lot of lights if you're going to try to shoot low. The shutter speed is really important as well. This is kind of how fast the picture gets received by the camera. For 24 frames per second, I do a 1 over 50 shutter speed setting. And last, the f-stop, which is what's going to control your depth of field, or how far away some things look. It's that blurry effect, basically. Now, I personally like using 3.5 or 4.0, but this is going to vary with what your uh, lens is going to support. Since I have the basic T3i setup, 3.5 is just about the lowest that I use. Create your shots. Now this one is probably going to be maybe one of the hardest ones, but it can also be the most rewarding. Now when I say create your shot, I don't mean to go out and record. I mean, think about what you're going to record. What your camera picks up in the rectangle that you choose is going to be really important, and it can change. There's a lot of different rules here. Some people like to use the filming rule called rule of thirds. Don't just create your shot, test your shot. Go out, you know, if you're going to make a video where you're sitting in your desk like myself, just grab a guitar, take a picture, or take a quick film, and then open it up on your computer. How does it look now? Maybe it looks worse, maybe that it looks better than you thought. Try to check that you're in focus. Uh, another thing is pick up one of these. Um, if your camera supports it, a wireless remote will help you stay in focus at all times. You can even go somewhere far away, press a button, and you can start recording and you'll have a better idea of if you're in focus or not. Consider getting a tripod. They come in all sorts of different sizes. Some fit on your desk. I'm using one right now, obviously, to film this, but you can also get one for phones. Now this thing caught me, costed me, sorry, about like eight bucks, and it's very sturdy. I film a lot of my cooking streams on it, so you know it's good. And uh, more importantly, all you have to do is take a cell phone and slide it in, and boom, you have an $8 tripod and you can film with something that shoots in 4K if you have a Samsung Galaxy or uh, one of the new iPhones. All of these uh, smartphones are really good cameras considering, and I know plenty of YouTubers who have been using cameras and getting better film shots than when I used to use a digital camcorder. 
Another thing is with guitar videos especially, you usually want people to look at your left hand unless your right hand is doing something intricate. So I tend to gravitate my shots towards showing off what my left hand is doing and I'll avoid big body shots unless I know that I'm moving around a lot and that seems like something interesting to the audience. Last thing I could suggest of course if you're still not, you know, wanting to buy any of these things is try stacking a few books up and placing your camera. Now the only issue with this is you're not going to be in focus most likely. So try having a mirror behind it or maybe even using a test photo and a timer with manual focus enabled. And that way you can be sort of sure that your shot is, you know, working out. I tend to use at least two shots for each actual music part. So if I'm playing a single lead line, I'm gonna shoot it from two different angles. Maybe one from down the neck, or maybe one from behind the bridge. Lighting is probably one of the most critical parts to getting a good looking video, in my opinion. Now, not everyone can afford uh, fancy umbrellas and lights and stands, but some of these things are a lot cheaper than you think, and a lot of things can be done without having to spend any money at all. For example, the first three, four years of my YouTube, I used windows and house lights and little lamps and anything I could find lying around just to brighten up the room. Uh, one of the things I'd like to suggest is the lighting triangle. To explain the lighting triangle, I have this really badly drawn picture of me. Now I tend to have the camera pointed right at me in the center or wherever my left hand is. Uh, sometimes if I'm standing up, I'm going to be at the center in the shot. Now the main light is the one that you see on the left, and this could be a window if you don't have, you know, a very powerful light source, or you could use some sort of lamp. I like using my umbrella light here. Now the fill light is going to be a little less powerful on the other side. Now this might be able to help you create some really cool looking shots, some shadows, so experiment here. This one could be, you know, another light, it could be another window, or maybe it could be some sort of uh, phone flashlight that you have going on. Now the backlight could be perhaps your room light or just another source. I tend to use a smaller desk lamp here and this is kind of to help outline yourself and you know give less of a flush look on your subject. Now I use uh, these umbrellas. These are from Limo Studio but I suggest the Cowboy Studio uh, lights because of build quality. Now you can get uh, umbrella lights or even soft boxes which are sort of uh, doing the same thing but in a more directional manner and sometimes they emit even more light depending on which models you look at and the kinds of light bulbs. If you're looking for a cheap solution however, uh, a window on a very you know beautiful day like this one will actually do pretty well. Shoot it. Just have fun, be yourself, try to stay in focus and in the shot that you've set up. Sometimes uh, it's good to take a test picture or even just check your video right after 10 seconds because you can see, oh, my head's not in that video or hey, I ran out of focus here. I like to mark the floor with um, slippers that I'll be wearing just to go back and forth. Another thing of course that helps is having a remote that can automatically focus myself as well as a USB cable so that I can check on my computer how I'm looking. Another thing to do of course if you're doing something live or acoustically is to consider uh, clapping and then lining up your clap with the microphone inside your DAW. Now that we've gotten our video footage taken and we have all the right angles and everything's looking really good, we can start editing it together. All right, so we're in Adobe Premiere right now. This is CS6, and what I'm basically doing is the process I do for every video. I take the raw clips from my camera, I drop them into a little bin, um, and whatever editor you use, you can do this. There's a, you know, a way to video edit in Reaper now, uh, the DAW I use. So uh, I would definitely actually recommend trying that out if you just you know, did not want to spend any money. Now I'm going to load up the WAV file for my song. Uh, this is a cover of Engage by the band Geminon. And uh, basically I'm going to expand it as I drop in. Sorry, I'm going fast. And basically I'm going to have the real song and then we got our video clip and what I want to do is press that little arrow and try to slice off some of the edge and basically just combine where I'm playing with where the song is and what I can do is I can align those little spikes and just play back and try to match it it's not an easy process but you get much better at it with time there are automatic ways 
but of course, uh, I do it manually. See, that's looking really good, so I'm probably going to, you know, just delete it. Now, you can do it by unlinking, but I like learning the hotkeys, and that way I can move faster, as you'll notice. Now, I like labeling the track based on how the angle is and what part I'm playing of the song. And then I just move it up, mute that track. It's kind of like mixing, and we go to the next one. And same thing, I'm going to mute the full track, try to figure out where it starts. If you match the spikes, you'll have a better shot at doing this. Sometimes you can use the metronome. Now, of course, I switch parts a lot in each angle, so it's important to try to cover up some of these changes just to make sure nothing looks too, uh, you know, fake. <laughs> Now again, what we're really doing here is trying to get the camera audio and the actual song to be aligned and then we get rid of the camera audio. And slowly you can just slice and switch between the parts. It's very similar to music mixing and it ends up looking good if you did it right. And yeah, for just as an example, that's how I switch over. Now, I, I try to keep the parts uh, important. So if I'm playing a solo, I'm going to show the solo part. If I have a bass solo, I'll show the bass part. And I try to go back and forth to keep up a bit of an advantage. Now, what I did here is add an effect called a color corrector. This is kind of a way of giving a mood or theme to your actual video so i'm gonna give it a bit of blue something that gives it a little space and maybe even a more cinematic feel a lot of movies use uh different color palettes depending on what they want now you can do it per shot you could do it for the whole thing but uh i try not to go too crazy with it um i try to check the uh, the low midtones and highlights of each shot Remember to check both shots, of course, if you're doing this, and play through the video. Sometimes sunlight changes and anything can happen. Now, of course, once I'm happy with that, you know, I'll check how the whites look. I'll compare it to another video, but uh, it's pretty much as simple as that. Now we just go to export. I use H.264 uh, to get a 1080p 24 frame per second video. Now I shot the video in 24 frames a second, so it's very important that you pick the same frame rate. Or you can use a program like uh, Handle Handle Break, I think, to convert it. Now this bit rate, uh, this is really important. Now by default, it wants me to do a target bit rate or a quality size of 32 megabits per second. Now, if I multiply that by 60, and then by 4 minutes, and then divide by 8, we're looking at 960 megabytes, and that's kind of more than I'd like. So, as YouTube recommends, I kind of shoot for 10 or 12. And then uh, Adobe Premiere actually tells you how large it is. Watch through your video a few times, show it to a friend and make sure it kind of looks good. Maybe reference another video, see if it looks better. Um, and consider the steps that you took. Maybe there was something you liked that you wished you did differently and that way you can do it for the next time. There's a lot of different things that you pick up as you make these, and the only way you can really learn is by making more videos and by learning more songs. Let me know if this tutorial helped. I'd really, really appreciate if it helped even one person make a video faster or, you know, more efficiently. And I really hope you guys look forward to more tutorials. I'm gonna try to get stuff out for 2017 that'll look really cool, and I'm gonna make more tutorials as you guys suggest them. Yeah.